OK, so what if our equations were not reverse product rule? What if our equations looked like this instead? This is not the reverse product rule. Because here, you have a, a y, but you don't have anything that goes in front of the dy by dx. right? So you can't, this doesn't look like the product rule backwards here. What you were allowed to do for this, and maybe this title should have also said this, you need to find something called the integrating factor. OK? Now, we can multiply through by the integrating factor. And the integrating factor is e to the power of the integral of p with respect to x. And I'll tell you why in a second this is true. But this is a magic trick that will make any of these things become a reverse product rule. It forces it to become a reverse product rule. So we can multiply through by the integrating factor e to the integral of p dx. This then produces an equation where we can use the previous reverse product rule trick. And we'll prove it in the next slide. So the standard form that you should have is dy by dx plus py equals q, where p and q are x functions. You may see it some, written in some books that it would be dy by dx plus p of x, y equals q of x. I just prefer this notation because it's just a little bit simpler. So the features that you should notice about this is that dy by dx is alone. There's nothing in front of the dy by dx. Okay? It has to look like this. And then you get the p of x goes in front of a single y. That's the other thing. And there must just be a q of x on that side. So when I look at this one that I've got here, the dy by dx is alone. What's p of x? Good. This is p, p of x. And this is q of x. Now, although this isn't a function of x, it is a function of x because it's just a constant. So my integrating factor is e to the integral of minus 4 dx, which is e to the minus 4x. We don't need to worry about plus c's or anything here. Now, you may find it helpful to do things like this on your side of the page. Say p of x is equal to minus 4, so the integral of p of x is minus 4x. You may find it helpful, rather than doing it all inside the e function, to actually write that separately. So what our trick now says that we do is we multiply everything through by the integrating factor. You're just not changing the equation here, because we're multiplying everything by the same thing. So we get e to the minus 4x dy dx minus 4 e to the minus 4x y equals e to the x multiplied by e to the minus 4x. What do you notice about this? It's the reverse product rule, because the derivative of e to the minus 4x is minus 4 e to the minus 4x, and the derivative of y is dy by dx. So the left-hand side is the derivative of what? Y e to the minus 4x. Y e to the minus 4x. And the right-hand side that we have still here is e to the minus 3x. OK? So we then get y e to the minus 4x is equal to minus a third e to the minus 3x plus c. So y equals? Minus a third e to the x plus e e to the 4x. So can we just force it when we have e to the x on the other side? Or can we Say that again. Because you know how we can kind of force it to become the reverse product? Rule? Yes. Can we just do that if we have e to the x on the right hand side? Yeah, the e this thing on the right hand side, this could have been sine x, this could have been anything at all. This doesn't matter that this is e to the x. It could have been anything, because q of x has got nothing to do with finding the so integrating we still, factor. We still integrate e to the power of 
this thing here. Yeah, this could have been, if this wasn't e to the x, if this was sine x, you would have had to integrate sine x e to the minus 4x, which would be a nightmare. But whatever it is, it's usually going to be something that you can integrate, OK? So we have got a few minutes. I might go slightly past the bell, but I don't mind doing that. And I hope you don't mind doing that either. So I'm going to just have a look on the next page. Remember, this is all going to be on YouTube, so you can look at this again. This is the proof about how the integrating factor works. It's not just a magic trick. So this is the standard function that looks like this, where you've got p and q as functions of x. Now we're supposing that there is f of x is the integrating factor. We're just pretending, let's say that there is an integra integrating factor called f of x. And we're just going to do what we would do previously, which was multiply everything by f of x that we've got like this. Now, if we can use the reverse product rule trick on the left-hand side, then it would have to be of the form f of x dy dx plus f dash x y. Okay, this is what it would be like. If this is what it was, we would say that this was the derivative of f of x y. Now, by comparing these things that we've got here, we can see that this thing and this thing are equal to each other. But the y's we can ignore, so we get that f dash x from this one is equal to f of x p. When we rearrange this by dividing by f of x and integrate, the, we get that f dash x over f of x integrates to ln of f of x. Why does it integrate to ln of f of x? Because that's the derivative of the denominator. So it's a reverse chain rule there. And then the other side is just the integral of e to the x. And then you rearrange it with an ln by saying that f of x is e to the integral of p with respect to x. So it works, OK? This is why the integrating factor works. We've got just about enough time for me to do an example. So you can read through this again if you need to read through this. But we're going to do something. <laughs> I hope it's not been too fast, but I, I, you can handle this. I know you can handle this. So. This is, what about if there's something in front of the dy by dx? Well, we said our general form that it works for is dy dx plus py equals q. There is nothing in front of the dy by dx. I said that on this page here when I said dy by dx has got to be alone and there's got to be a single y here for this to be able to work, OK? So the first thing we do is we just get rid of the cos x. And that's why I've said step one, divide by anything in front of the dy by dx. So we get dy by dx plus 2y tan x equals cos cubed x, OK? Now we need to find out what the integrating factor is. So I write down if. What is p equal to here? 2 tan x. So the integral of p with respect to x is the integral of 2 tan x with respect to x, which is? ln sec x. So it's going to be 2 ln sec x. You find that in the formula book, that the, the tan integrates to ln sec x. Now, the integrating factor is e to the integral of p dx, which is e to the 2 ln sec x, which is, x, which is just sec squared x. So we were thinking, oh, we're always going to have to multiply by e. We don't have to multiply by e, because e to the ln is going to give us something. So we're going to multiply everything by sec squared x. We get sec squared x dy dx plus 2 tan x sec squared x y equals cos cubed x times sec squared x, which is cos, cos x, which is just cos x. So we've multiplied through by the integrating factor. And oh, now we want to see that this is a reverse chain rule. Is this the reverse chain rule on the left? Yeah, because y goes to the Because the y goes to dy dx and sec squared goes to 2 tan x sec x with the sec x there. So you get d by dx sec squared x oh, with the y. I'm going to put the y inside the front there equals cos x. So you get y sec squared x equals the integral of cos x, yeah, I'm just taking it a little bit slow. y sec squared x equals sine x plus c. So y equals 
well, instead of it's over sec squared, sin sorry, over cos squared. squared so sine x cos squared x when you c multiply by that, plus c, horrible having to write c in front of cos, plus c cos squared x. That's the solution to this first order differential equation. Okay, so I'm only going to, I'm not going to set you loads of questions on this, but I needed you to see this now so that you can watch the video again and you can do some practice for me for Friday so that Friday's lesson, we can actually spend the lesson like productively doing hard, hard questions. But it's really cool, isn't it? It's really cool how that, that all produces this reverse chain rule that we've got here. Did you always wear an earring? Yeah, I've always had an earring. I don't know.